Multi-level modelling is one of the most important and interesting developments in the statistical modelling of social science data over the last 30 years. What multi-level modelling enables us to do is to represent the populations that our subjects and our topics of research are located in. Previously, the information in these populations had not been used in the way that it might have been, leading to inaccurate inferences that people were drawing from observational data, but also leaving us without the insights that a more detailed analysis from a multi-level model would give us. Let us consider a study in which we're interested in the social correlates of educational attainment of pupils age 11. The population is highly structured. These pupils are located in classrooms or with teachers, which in turn are located within schools, which in turn are located within local education authorities. And we are interested in understanding the variability between these different parts of the population structure. So we would like to understand and partition the total variability between these different levels. So for example, we might find that 70% of the variability is between pupils at level one. 15% of the variability might be between classrooms or teachers at level two. A further 10% might be between schools and a further 5% between local education authorities. And so by using multi-level modeling techniques, we can partition the variability in this way and then understand more about the populations that we're studying. Not only are we interested in the partition of this variability between the different levels, we are also interested to try to understand what accounts for this variability. So for example, it may be the case that pupils' characteristics such as family income and social class explain some of the variability in pupils' attainment. In addition, the variability between classrooms or between teachers might be explained by teacher characteristics. For example, the amount of experience that a teacher has. And also at the school level, again, we might be able to explain the variability in attainments at the school level by variables such as whether the school is state funded or privately funded. So also, we might be able to explain variability between local education authorities. Authorities under the control of one party might have higher or lower attainments than local education authorities under the control of another party. There are also other ways in which multi-level modelling can give us insights into social processes. For example, suppose we are interested in the relation between family income and attitudes to immigrants we might find that that relation varies from one geographical area to another. So here, the population is structured by geographical area. It may well be, for example, that the relation between family income and attitudes to immigrants is stronger in those areas where there are higher proportions of immigrants than in those areas where the proportions are small. Again, by putting these questions into a multi-level framework, we can understand more about the ways in which social processes are operating. Another structure, which is also amenable to a multi-level modeling approach, is the structure that is induced by situations where we take repeated measures on particular individuals. In other words, where we have longitudinal data. In this situation, the repeated measures form the first level of our hierarchy, and the cases are the second level. And we can then partition the variability in the characteristic of interest between occasions at level one and between the individuals at level two. And we can then take this further by actually looking at how the variability and change in a particular characteristic of interest varies by age or by time, as we can see here. So here we have a characteristic for example, it could be height or language or attitude. And we see how these characteristics change with age or with time. And we see that different individuals have different ways of changing with age or time. 
and we are interested in how these variabilities between individuals can be related to background variables, social class, family income and so on in the same kind of way that we thought about the educational attainment example. Multi-level modelling has developed because of advances in statistical computing, which means that the sorts of problems that can be solved can be done more quickly and more efficiently than was the case in the past. Many of the standard statistical software packages have multi-level capabilities, for example, SPSS and Stata. Nevertheless, there are some good arguments for still using specialist multi-level modeling software. For example, the package known as MLWIN, because these specialist packages offer opportunities for the development of more flexible models and different kinds of estimation methods that the standard packages do not allow us to do.